Hello YouTube listeners and watchers. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD. <clears throat> this semester I'm teaching C++ at El Camino College and online class at Santa Monica College and the student needs some information on Sentinel control loop. So I decided to make this video to clarify concept of Sentinel control loop. So basically, in central control loop, the data entered by the user or from the keyboard or read from the file is tested at the loop entry point. So it's a pretest loop in that sense. Anytime data entry is done before the loop is entered, it's called a pretest loop. <clears throat> in most real life experiments or data processing situation, some values or values for program variable may never be re realistic. These unrealistic or impossible values are called central values. <clears throat> for example, a negative test score at El Camino College is an example of central value. Some other example of cent Central values are 31st February, 13 month of a year, negative value of age or height or year of birth, negative value of earthquake on a Richter scale. <clears throat> and when data are read from the file, one data or one line at a time, the last value in the line can be made to be a central value to indicate that end of the data reading has reached and you can do the same thing with the keyboard data entry you can enter a whole bunch of numbers if you're entering numbers last being the impossible or sentinel value so sentinel value is something that is the impossible value for the data that you're processing okay what are the characteristics of central control loop? We'll state here, then we'll demo in our code. <clears throat> central control loop require a prime read. What that means is the first set of data must be read into variable before the loop entry point. Such prime read is similar in nature to initializing the loop counter for the count control loop. For count control loop, we initialize counter to zero or one, whatever and then we increment or decrement that inside the loop. <clears throat> now, if value that is given as a prime read is not a central value, then program will enter the loop. Otherwise, if it's a central value, program will not even enter the loop. Of course, you know that's the characteristic of pretest loops that it may not even be executed once. Inside the loop, you have to do a update read update read to update the loop condition. If update loop is not done, you'll end up with the infinite loop. Okay, so very important thing about central loop is your prime read that's done before loop even begins, your update read that's done inside the loop. <clears throat> if update read is not done, you'll end up with the infinite loop. We can demo that in the code. So let me go to Xcode now to show you how a central loop works. So let's say we want to sum ages of some number of people. Now ages are always going to be a positive number. So its central value would be minus. Nobody's age can be minus. <clears throat> so we declare two variables, sum of ages. This should be initialized to zero. And I'll explain why that would be. And this will hold one age as we read the data in the central loop. So I think it'll be a good idea that I run the program first and then explain it. So let's run it. And I'm gonna enlarge this run area quite a bit <clears throat> so that you can see how program works. So let's just do that and 
It says enter all ages to be summed, space separated. After the last age entry, enter a negative number for data entry termination. So I always said that <coughs> a sentinel loop is a pretest loop. It may not even execute once if I enter a sentinel value. So I'm going to enter a sentinel value, and then you'll see that you know, nothing happens. See, program ended because loop was not even entered. So no summing was done, nothing was printed. Okay. Main characters of pretest loop didn't even run once. Let's try it again. This time we'll actually enter some ages. <clears throat> okay, so this time I know that if I sum up numbers 1 to 10, some will be 55. So I'm just going to enter ages 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And don't have any more data, so I'll enter a negative number. non sentinel values, sentinel values. So program will read all these, sum these up, will not add this to the sum, just discards that one. And it should be 55. Some of all ages enter is 55. Okay. So let us see, let us copy this and explain how it works in the program. Okay. So let me show you now. So <clears throat> we initialize this accumulator of ages to zero. It's optional to initialize this one because we are taking input for this here anyway. But my habit is to just initialize everything zero or something. So imagine this was prompted to the user and this set of data which I just copied was entered. Okay. Like this. So <clears throat> first time one is entered into one age memory. Okay. When all this data is sitting in the buffer program will read it one at a time. So on line 15 here, one will be read. One greater than zero is true. Sum of ages were initialized to zero. So one age is entered. Uh, sum added to the sum. So sum of ages becomes now, let's just put uh, sum of ages. Here becomes one now, because is that one. And then, this data is sitting in the buffer, so this got consumed. So I'm just going to put maybe, okay, asterisk after that. So this got consumed. Now, as you know, C narrow arrow operator throws away the white space, next is reads 2, and 2 greater than 0 is also true. So sum of ages was already 1, so it gets 2 gets added to it becomes three, <clears throat> okay. So you consume this much data. I'm just gonna move my asterisk here. So I consume this much. Anything before asterisk is consumed. And then this data sitting in the buffer, scene will read three. Again, all it throws over the white space. So three is read, three greater than zero is true. And then it's added to the here. So we'll just do it three plus three equals six now. Okay. So three got red. So I move my asterisk here. <clears throat> and then line 19 will this time read four. Well, four greater than zero is still true. So we'll add the four. And notice this way we'll read 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So when 10 is read, then 10 greater than 0 is true. It will get added. <clears throat> this will be actually 55. So we get 55. But then it reads minus one finally. And minus one greater than zero is false. When this is false, we exit the loop. 
and finally we only want to print sum of ages if it's not zero because just in case they enter a negative number it's going to come out zero so that gets printed here that's how we got 55 here now this is very important and that's where a lot of students make an error they forget to initialize this now in xcode it will still work because xcode initializes even c++ variable automatically but this may not work in any other compiler I cannot show that to you here. Always give me a warning here uh, that it may not be initialized. Yeah, the warning is right here. Uninitialized when used here. And initialize the variable to silence this warning. And if I say fix, it actually did the zero for me. I call variables into which you are adding something or multiplying something an accumulator. The rule is accumulator should always be initialized. Okay. Rule. Let me type down this rule. Rule. Okay. <clears throat> Accumulators. You, you might have more than one accumulator. For example, you may have counter here, which is set to zero, and you're increasing that here to count as to how many ages you got. That should also be set to zero. This is the most often two things that are most often forgotten in uh, Sentinel Root. People forget to initialize the accumulators. Okay, how can I can you get around that? Always initialize everything. That's the way it is. The second forgotten thing is that people forget to do the update read. Let me show you the demo, what can happen if you don't do update. So let's try that now. <clears throat> okay. Let me go up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I have minus here. And nothing happened that's because <clears throat> only one first value was read and one greater than zero is true and that's it I got the, there was no update this loop condition remains true forever that's called an infinite loop so I'm stuck in this loop on and on and again so two mistakes that are made in sentinel control loop is that People forget to initialize the accumulator. How can you get around that? Initialize everything. Every variable initialize them. And second is that people forgot to do the update. We didn't do the update. We got the infinite loop. We remove the problem and our program will work again. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't do minus. Okay, minus one. There you go. And you can do it in two lines or three lines. That doesn't really matter. So, <clears throat> okay. So, once again, this is Dr. Singhal. We talked about central control loop. Use the C++ code, but you can use Java, C Sharp, Visual Basic, C, any language. The principle will be exactly same and that's all I have to say for now thank you for watching